I don't know how long are you thinking to take it, Professor João? Um, I would say 25 minutes or 30 minutes. 25 or 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes. Okay, Leandro, how long are you thinking about talking, speaking? Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Jerome. Hello. I, I imagine also 30 minutes maximum, not more than that. Great. And then we are going to have the 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 time for for interaction with the audience. The mm -hmm. the session will be live streamed on YouTube, and the audience will be able to interact using Slido. They will able they will be able to ask questions, and then I will present the questions here on screen, and then uh, you can answer. The questions. So just let's just wait a few more minutes, like two more minutes, and then we'll begin. Let the audience set themselves. Okay. Can we start? Yeah. All right. So welcome everybody to our uh, session. Uh, we are going to have two presenters this afternoon, Professor Jerome Zancel, and we have Pietra interacting live on YouTube with us. So, uh, Professor Jerome will be talking about a digital multi-point, uh, multi-viewpoint model to represent and analyze life trajectories. Professor Leandro Weave is with, from URG is, is with us, and he will also be speaking a little bit about this subject. Uh, so, I will present our both uh, speakers, and then we'll have some interaction uh, on Slido, through Slido. You can send your questions. The link for Slido is on our uh, in the description on uh, of our transmission on YouTube. So, Professor uh, Jerome Gensel is a full professor in computer science at University Grenoble Alps. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> he, he researches about mobility, context awareness, and social support, <laughs> and spatial and temporal analysis and visualization and Spatial and Temporal Semantic Web. <laughs> professor uh, Leandro Weaves is a uh, uh, professor at Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul. And he's also, he also has a PhD in computer science. And now he's working as our secretary of um, distance education at Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul. So, uh, we are very pleased to have both of you here and hope we have a very nice discussion about this topic. Please, Professor Jehan. Thank you, Professor Raquel. Uh, I would like to start my uh, talk by uh, first thanking uh, Professor Valdeni for inviting me to present this ongoing work that uh, I, I share with him and, and his team currently. And uh, this work is about um, um, the notion of life trajectories. Uh, I think that it's, it is a topic that uh, should interest any one of us since uh, we all have uh, a life path. And uh, the challenge here for us, I am a computer scientist, and the challenge is to find a model to, to represent uh, 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 a life trajectory, and then to try to to exploit this uh, this model. So, my talk uh, is organized as follows. First, there will be a short introduction, and then I will have a brief overview of uh, life trajectories uh, as they are understood and um, tackled in computer science. And uh, then I will uh, present the, the the model we have proposed, which is a uh, digital multi-point model for life trajectories. And uh, I will show the, the underlying modeling methodology to construct and to fit this model. And also I will say a few words about the, the data we have integrated so far or, and uh, how we expect to, to 
explore data, it means analyze and uh, query uh, such data. And uh, at the very end of my talk, I would be uh, um, asking this question, what to do with, uh, what is the link between life trajectories and learning trajectories, since I know that the audience here is more uh, directed towards uh, learning uh, in, in general. And then I, I will conclude my, my, my talk. So um, about the, the concept of life trajectory, it's a concept that has been introduced in social sciences and which is used particularly nowadays in sociology. And uh, you can see a life trajectory has an interweaving of multiple biographical lines that are more or less autonomous or dependent on each other. Because uh, you may think of uh, a life trajectory as a composite or a complex object which is made of different biographical lines and which of those lines you can think of, a, uh, for instance, a biographical line concerning education, work and employment or family life or social life, else, leisure, finances, political itinerary, religious or spiritual itinerary. And each of these biographical lines is or not uh, attached to uh, a, a, an individual. So the idea would be to um, uh, try to model uh, such a uh, life trajectory, which, as I said, is uh, in a sense a composite object made of several biographical lines. So um, our motivations are computer scientists was to he help uh, sociologists and to model, analyze and understand the paths and motivations of individuals. So uh, if you look more deeper in sociology, life trajectories address diverse cases of application. The sociologists, they usually look at migra migratory trajectories, professional trajectories, residential tra trajectories, everything that concerns people in general. And then they look at the trajectories. They look at so, some groups of people or uh, people of a region in particular. So uh, this led to a case by case analysis uh, of life trajectories. And the, the, the challenge for the sociologist is to find uh, similar social configurations between people. So how do uh, sociologists work? Usually they make stories and interviews and then they, uh, by hand, uh, using a manual processing, they produce uh, a graph graphic representation, graphical representations, or, or they, pre they, pro they produce some um, uh, data files, some, some, some kind of uh, style, sorry, sheets, for, for instance. So <clears> how <throat> motivations? was to, as computer scientists, again, was to uh, help social scientists to model, build and analyze life trajectories and to provide them with a digital tool to model, build and analyze those uh, trajectories. So the, the question was how to provide them with a software environment to model and build and analyze life trajectories. So uh, what we would like to do is help them in the, by exchanging or help or uh, automatizing as much as possible the manual processing they use so far so that they could have a, sp a spreadsheet uh, and uh, the more important is that they uh, have a digital representations of, of the surveys, the stories, the interviews they have and then afterwards they can use them, they can visualize them, they can analyze them using a um, digital tool. So. Um, if, you, if we look back at uh, life trajectory in computer science, then we have uh, the, the, the problem we would like to tackle is how to model those trajectories, how to collect data so that they, we can enter the, those data in the, in the model and how, uh, at the end, how to exploit those, those data. So uh, when we look at the object, the concept of life trajectories, it, it comes to us that it's a multi-thematic object then we have to model different and complex themes. When I'm talking about themes, you can look at the picture on the, on the right. And then I'm, uh, we were talking, previously I was talking about uh, biographical lines, but now you can think of sub-trajectories of, 
of a life trajectory. And then you can think about the residential trajectory or the family trajectory or the professional trajectory, which are sub-trajectories that compose a life trajectory. So, and when I'm talking about multi-thematic, I'm, re I'm referring to each of these themes, residential, family, professional, etc. And then when you talk about the trajectory, then by, oh, I mean, in a sense, you are, um, you are dealing with time because there is a, a, a starting point and, the, and there is the current point or the end point of a trajectory. Uh, so uh, in that case, we have to handle a, a temporal dimension. And then also, uh, which is uh, always coupled to this dimension, is the geographical dimension. So, uh, for instance, when I'm talking about a residential trajectory, it is in a sense uh, a, a geographic dimension because we would like to know where people live, where they move, etc. So, uh, ge uh, I would say special data is uh, also important in a life trajectory, but also as special. It means. Uh, you can think of a trajectory that would be more um, abstract and, so in, uh, and not referring to a space. Uh, so for instance, you could uh, refer to a, a financial trajectory of, of an individual. Okay. So um, then when you deal with uh, themes, when you deal with time and when you deal with space, then you, 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 you deal with different level of granularity. And then for instance, looking at space you can look at things uh, happening at a level of the of the districts or at, at the level of a county or at the level of country so that's the same for the the the, the, the topics or the themes of course that the same for the time you you can look at uh, at the time at the level of uh, a year or a month or a decade etc so we have to take into account also that multi-granular aspect of life trajectory and then finally, uh, since we were working with a sociologist, uh, the sociologist paid a lot of attention to explanatory factors in those uh, life trajectories. What are uh, the life trajectories factors? Uh, this refers to uh, events that makes the trajectory change at a moment in time. So uh, it would be interesting for us to model not only the life trajectory in all its complexity, the multi-dimension I was mentioning, the spatial dimension, the, the granularity and the temporal dimension, but also um, to uh, insert into those trajectories some explanatory factors that explain how or why, sorry, uh, a trajectory uh, change suddenly or regularly. So at the end, we have, uh, to uh, those, those challenges, uh, uh, we have to produce a model that is able to handle the multi-thematic dimensions of, uh, uh, sorry, the, the, the multiple di dimensions of a life trajectory, because we have several sub-trajectories, as I said. Some of them are temporal, uh, all of them, sorry, are temporal. Some of them are geographic or, or are special. Some of them you need to consider information at different levels of detail and of course what would be nice is to have some explanatory factors for instance on the figure on on the on the right here uh, you may say that you are uh, observing uh, someone who ha has uh, a, a child and now live in couple and perhaps g has more money uh, on a, a bigger salary on the professional uh, viewpoint or um, trajectory and then it's time for them that's our motivations for building a house so these are explanatory factors for instance in that case so um, here is a brief state of the heart simply because in computer science that not that much uh, work that uh, tackle or handle the uh, the object of a life trajectory the, the work we have chosen as a reference is the work by a Canadian uh, researcher in geography and computer science whose name is Marius Theriou. And then he, he proposed a model who, which contains three thematic trajectories uh, about res, resi, res, 
residential uh, aspects, familial uh, or family aspects, and professional aspects of the life trajectory. You have a, a picture, uh, an excerpt of uh, one of, of the paper from Terio that shows the, the the three dimensions we have here in in the life trajectories in the model. So what is interesting in the model is that they handle and or propose the concepts of episode and events. An episode is a period of time during which an attribute that describes a dimension of the uh, trajectory has or keeps the same value. And an event then will be um, uh, the moment where um, uh, such an attribute change its value. So this work is very interesting because it handles uh, not only the, the, the three dimensions, but they say that it will be able to handle multiple themes and also they tackle or they handle uh, geographical and aspatial trajectories. Um, but we think that uh, when we look at this model, we think that we have to expand it, uh, uh, notably because it, it, it didn't take into account the granularity and also there's no uh, explanatory factors that uh, are attached or associated with events. So, and of course we have discovered some other, but a few again, uh, models that uh, were able to um, tackle or handle uh, the representation of, um, 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 I, would, I would say semantic trajectory, not life trajectory in particular, but uh, uh, semantic trajectory. I'm, I'm thinking of mobile object trajectory. Those mobile objects can be uh, persons of cars or planes, etc. So when we look at the, at the existing models, uh, we have uh, different approaches. And when we um, uh, classify those models, uh, comparing them with the, the criteria we would like to have with or a representation of a uh, life trajectory, then it happens that none of them ha has a pay, or oh, sorry, pay a particular attention to the explanation or even. So that was a, a way we decided to choose. So uh, now I'm going to present uh, the digital multi viewpoint model for life trajectories that we have uh, proposed. And uh, it's the moment for me to thank the contributors of, of this work. Uh, uh, and in particular, David Noel, who, who is a, uh, who, who is, yeah, is no more a PhD student, but he has defended his PhD on the topic of a, a semantic web-based approach to study life trajectories. And most of the, the work I present tonight are extracted from uh, his PhD. And then uh, we have two supervisors, I have two supervisors uh, with me, um, uh, Pierre Lequeau, who is a sociologist, and Marlene Villanova, who is my colleague in the, uh, in the league laboratory here in computer science in uh, in Grenoble. So uh, here is the the methodology we have. So uh, this is a, a picture of computer scientists, and then we pay attention to three very important steps: modeling. It means we, we try to model uh, and to build a model of uh, life trajectory, and then we try to acquire data to field the model, and then we can exploit the model and the data it contains. So uh, I'm not going to enter too much into detail, but uh, here is the architecture of the, the tool we have developed that uh, implements the methodology. And uh, just what you have to know is that uh, the underlying technology are the, the semantic web technologies. So it means that we have, instead of a database, for instance, we have chosen a triple store and which is able to handle RDF graphs and which is the, the standard format for exchange uh, data on the web. So the, the first, steps is, is first step is about modeling. So what the challenge is here or the aim we have is uh, um, to um, propose a progressive construction of a thematic life trajectory ontology. And uh, we, we, the idea would be, for instance, you can think of as many dimension or sub trajectories as you like. And then uh, if you have to model a life trajectory, then 
uh, you will be given the possibility to define as many dimensions as you like, as many viewpoints as you like, as many sub-trajectories as, as you like. But first of all, you have to define what is an individual for you. What are the characteristics or the features you keep to describe a person? So uh, first, we, 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 the, the first step of the uh, methodology is to describe a typical individual and we are going to observe and to construct, to build uh, the uh, life trajectory of such typical individuals. So we are uh, concerned by using control and standard vocabulary to describe the concept we are going to handle in the model. So that's not surprising that, for instance, to describe a person, we use the fourth ontology, friend, of a friend, which is used, for instance, in the social network to describe relationships between persons, okay? So uh, maybe, I hope you can see, but for instance, in this um, uh, ontology, the fourth ontology, a person is described by a name, an address, etc. cetera, uh, his birth or her birthplace, her, his or her birthday, etc. cetera. So we have here a certain kind of um, uh, features of attributes uh, which are considered as, as a standard description of, of what a person is. So we use that, this description. And then comes the moment when you are going to describe if each of the sub-trajectory of the life trajectory. And then uh, for this, we apply what is called a design pattern. It means that you have a pattern and you're going to uh, apply this pattern as much as uh, you uh, you will um, as much as trajectory that are needed okay so uh, remember that a thematic trajectory or sub trajectory is a succession of episodes in blue here and events in cycle here so an episode is a stable uh, state of a or for a person and it is valid for a theme for instance you may have an episode that is embedded in the residential sub-trajectory or the residential um, viewpoint. And as I said, it is stable during an interval of time. It means that this interval will begin by an event and will, be, will end by an event. Um, so the event, uh, uh, they, are, uh, they, they are marking the beginning and the end of an episode, as I said. And an event is linked to a theme and it corresponds to the passage from one episode to another. So you may think, um, you may see a trajectory as a succession or a sequence of um, event, episode, event, episode, etc. That is what is modeled here on the right when you have a kind of UML view of the, of the model of the trajectory. A trajectory is made of episode and event. An episode is linked to a begin event and a end event. And of course, as I said that uh, those life trajectories were in a sense uh, temporal, then we use uh, a, a standard of, um, of the OGC, which is uh, the equivalent of the W3C for the geographic information that describe uh, the, um, the concepts that uh, describe the, the, the temporal or the, the dimension or, or time. So uh, for geographical tra trajectories, uh, again, we use um, uh, an ontology that is called GeoSparkle. And with uh, such an ontology, you may describe the space where things happen. So we describe using standard vocabularies when things happen, and we describe using standard vocabularies where things happen. So um, then you have, it's time to, to build um, uh, each of the um, sub trajectory and then the, the theme. So we are going to apply the, the design pattern and for instance, here, here we have a, an example of a trajectory with three dimension residential. Uh, oh, sorry, that's, uh, uh, I made a mistake. This is the only, this is only one um, um, dimension. This is the, the residential uh, trajectory. And how we, we define a, a, a theme, we, we choose some uh, features 
for instance, where you are talking about uh, the, tra the residential trajectory, then it is important to know about the residential status of a person and the time of housing he is living in and the location. So, for instance, in that case, we choose those three attributes or features as a description, very simple, uh, of uh, the, um, the residential trajectory. So the value of those attributes can be, for instance, for the residential status, here we have a, a, um, a piece of the life uh, trajectory of a person looking at the viewpoint of the residential trajectory. And we see that at the beginning, he was a tenant and then probably uh, something happened, something happened an event that concerned uh, the type of housing and then it changed, it means he moves from a studio to a two room uh, apartment, for instance, but he was still a tenant. And then through the event E7 here, he becomes the owner of the three room apartment at the end. So uh, when we define uh, a sub trajectory or dimension, we need, as I said, to list, um, of course, the, the name of the, of the, of the of the sub trajectory, but also we have to define each of those attributes. For that, we give a name and also we ask the user to define the type because uh, these are some data that will be um, processed by, by the tool. So here is uh, uh, a view of, a, of the ontology of a of life trajectory, which includes only one theme at that moment, which is the residential theme. So we have a person here, she has a residential trajectory. Here is the residential trajectory made of episodes and events. And if you look on the right here, we are, uh, I'm showing here the different um, features or attributes that define this dimension. For instance, the fact that, uh, does he rent or loan this apartment? Is it, what is the housing type of, uh, of, uh, of the house, the number of rooms, etc. Then uh, this pattern, uh, we apply it again in order to build the second dimension. The second dimension deals with the uh, professional trajectory. And again, on the right, you can see some features that we consider as important and defining this dimension. For instance, the salary, the type of contract, etc. And then at that moment, we have an ontology, a life trajectory ontology, which includes two sub trajectories, the residential trajectory and the professional trajectory. If you would like to add a third uh, dimension, for instance, family, then it would be quite easy. And the same process uh, apply. You have to, okay, give the name of the sub trajectory and then define all the, the features or attributes which uh, define this um, dimension. So when it comes to the explanatory factors, uh, as I said, uh, an exp explanatory factor explains a life event. So how do we explain uh, a, a, li a life event? We expl explain it by another event or uh, the status of an episode, or an event can even be explained by several factors. And sometimes an event just shows that the, the individual uh, has anticipated a particular situation. And then he has, for instance, decided to move because a, a baby, for instance, were, were announced in, in, in the family. So here in the picture, we have two uh, dimensions in the in the in the life trajectory. We have the family and the residential trajectory, and then you can see here we have this event E seven, uh, sorry E six, which is explained by three factors, F three, F one, and F two. So uh, the idea is to explain why such a person did change or did move from a three room apartment to a house. The explanation could be that uh, uh, if we look at the family trajectory, he lived in couple, he decided to live in couple. So that was, that could be explained uh, as the main motivation for uh, changing or moving from a three room apartment to a house. 
Of course, those explanatory factors can be given by the, the person uh, who hands for a survey, uh, but also uh, we, we think that such explanatory factors um, can be uh, automatically generated if we compare to similar situation. So um, this, this picture is just to show that we consider different kind of uh, uh, explanatory factors. We have a classification or, or typology of different explanatory factors. And it is possible to uh, link or to associate an explanation and even a weight with a, a factor. If you have several fact, uh, explanatory factors, then the, 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 the person himself or herself may say that the main reason why I move was, but also because, and then he is able to make a distinction uh, between the different strengths of the explanatory factors he considers. Okay, so we take that into account also in, in the model. Also, you may have the case where the event that explains the change in the tra trajectory is external. For instance, here you have a move who um, is due to the, the feeling of insecurity of the, of, of the person because he was living in a, in a place and he felt uh, that the place had become insecure. So he decided to move. So this is an external uh, factor in that case. So the second step um, is about how to acquire data and to feed the model. So, so far we have explored two tracks. We have uh, built an interactive data entry interface, uh, which has been developed in order to um, respond to a particular use case. Uh, and we have developed an input uh, uh, an interface that uh, make it possible to input uh, data from preformatted CSV or XS files that comes from surveys. Such surveys have been already carried out or they are ongoing um, surveys. So uh, in the use case we have uh, 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 achieved, uh, it was dealing with the res residential trajectories in, around Grenoble, uh, the city where, where I live. And then we have designed and developed an interface uh, which is dedicated to the collection of residential trajectories. This means that this interface was put in line and then we have, uh, there was a sample of people and they were asked to feed uh, the, or to answer the survey using, using this interface. So. This interface so sh show, shows that we are, uh, uh, by means of menu and uh, different fields, uh, acquiring data that are going to feed the model. So this is an interface for collecting a, a residential episode, for instance, but and it provides support for multi granularity. I was uh, I was talking about at the beginning of my talk. So, for instance, when you ask someone where did you live twenty years ago it's not sure that he's going to answer uh, the number of the streets, maybe he has forgotten, but perhaps he thinks of the, the, the place or the district in, in the town where we live. So this, uh, you see that here, uh, there are several uh, level of precision uh, that are, uh, are needed when you ask people where were you when you, mm, when you were living in, 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 in this town, etc. Precisely, perhaps he, he, he doesn't know. So, so the idea is to provide a support for uh, such uh, uh, multi granularity or level of precision. And then this is the same for the, the when when did you move? Oh, it was in June or 2014 or uh, no, perhaps it was in summer, etc. So there are. So I'm, I'm sorry, the the interface is in French. So, but it means that I hope you understand that here. There are some, we handle different level of precision. And also uh, we are able through the interface to uh, collect explanatory factors given by uh, the, 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 the user, or, uh, the, the individual uh, who is currently telling about, telling about his life. So here we ask what are reasons that have, uh, um, directed your, your, your choice 
uh, what are the reasons for your choice? And then we ask him either to choose a, a professional event or a familial, uh, family event, etc. So this is the, the interface. And uh, uh, what, uh, to, to end up with, with this interface, there are also the fact that we have uh, taken into account that people, at, 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 when you make a survey, uh, they are impressed sometimes and, and, and they can't remember at the very moment uh, about the thing. And the idea was to put that survey in line so, so that at every moment uh, the, the, the people can come and tell more about or change things or modify things about what they have told before. And then to complete the, 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 the talk or the tale about the, the, the life trajectory. So uh, also in this interface, we use control vocabularies. This is the case, for instance, we, when we ask what kind of work or job uh, the, the, the person uh, was having at that moment. So uh, here is the list, the French uh, standard list that describe all the professions in e every sectors uh, uh, of the league. So um, the second part uh, of the data acquisition is uh, data collection. Then upstream here, uh, we have built a prototype, prototype interface uh, who makes it possible to build uh, our own uh, life trajectory. So uh, you have to describe here the characteristic of the person. For instance, you may think that the, the color of the head is an important feature for your uh, survey, for the things you would like to model in your life trajectory model. So it is possible to do that. But I'm just saying that we are pro pro providing an interface that makes it possible for people to adapt and uh, 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 build their own uh, life trajectory ontology. So once you have defined the person, the characteristic of the individual, then you may define the different, the different dimensions. This is done here. And then we are able to generate um, um, a, a schema of the ontology because the ontology at the moment has only the concept and the relations. It has no data inside. So we have chosen here the turtle format, which is dedicated to uh, the exchange on the, on, on the web, uh, data exchange on the web. And here at uh, the, uh, the very bottom, you can see that we uh, have a button here that makes it possible for people to enter value in the model using their own CSV or XS file. The thing is that we have provided pre-formatted CSV or um, XS files, which helps people to take the data from a survey um, and then to enter it in, in the trajectory, large trajectory model we, we propose. So uh, downstream, the data files uh, are read, and then all of those data are transformed in um, RDF data, in knowledge graph. So we have chosen this uh, just because we think that when you are uh, building a life trajectory, some event or some explanation can be discovered by a contextual facts that are described somewhere in the web because the, the web of data is this global database where a lot of information are freely are linked and uh, open and then freely available. So the idea was to ourself produce some data about life trajectories, uh, which are uh, web data. So it means that all the data we are, uh, we are transforming our model and the data it contains in knowledge graphs. So, uh, of course, knowledge graph can be seen or visualized as, as graph, but you may also visualize them as in a tabular format. So in that case, for instance, uh, we are uh, observing a person P1 and uh, we uh, know that she has a, a, a familiar trajectory and it's possible to uh, uh, navigate and to look at the element or the information that concern his familiar, familiar trajectory uh, here. So, as I said, there are also possible through the triple store interface we use, GraphDB, to have a visual graph. Here you have this person, P1, and you have access to other nodes who are corresponding to information in this 
uh, different sub uh, trajectories. And then the, comes the exploitation. Uh, well, uh, the exploitation is uh, basically relies on the use of uh, Sparkle, which is the query language for RDF data. And then uh, also because we handle the geographical dimensions, we use GeoSparkle, which is a, a, a geographic extension of, uh, of, uh, of Sparkle. So it's very hard to read, perhaps less if you are familiar with SQL because our Sparkle is quite close to SQL. But uh, in that case, for instance, we are looking for the cities where the individual P1, which is a per, who is a person, lived. So uh, these are Sparkle um, uh, syntax for, for, for the query. But of course, the, the, the result can be given in the shape of a tabular. Uh, uh, form or a table and then also we provide some temporal operators on trajectory because it has a temporal dimension and also uh, we provide some operators on explanatory factors so in that case for instance it is possible um, to uh, look at all or to extract all the trajectory we we have uh, in which uh, the people for instance has lived in Grenoble and then as live in Paris. So move from Grenoble to Paris. So you can imagine that we have 1,000 or more uh, life trajectories, and then we would be interested in looking for, in these life trajectories, in the residential trajectories of all these people, uh, the people who have moved from the city of Grenoble to the city of Paris. So uh, we have the same, uh, we have a, a set of operators for the explanatory factors. And for instance, here, uh, you may be interested in the factor, uh, I mean, the event that explain uh, why uh, a, 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 an individual has moved from a, um, a residential status from, uh, let's say, for instance, um, uh, tenant for, uh, to, to owner, okay? So here, uh, what are the explanatory factors for moves after which the individual has uh, become uh, uh, the owner of uh, his uh, uh, housing? So currently, uh, and this will be quite the, the end of the talk, we are working on, um, because we have, uh, we've been held back by the, the COVID crisis, I think, as most of you. And uh, we are now currently exploiting a real data set because the, 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 the survey I was talking previously about the residential, the use case about the resident, residential tra trajectories uh, involved, uh, I would say, about 50 persons. But now we are exploiting a real data set, which is a survey about biographical paths. And the objectives for us is to test our model and our methodology and to provide new perspectives in the analysis. I mean, the visualization, the queries, the clusters of uh, uh, individual life trajectories. So what is this uh, real data set? It's called 3B. Um, it is a biographical survey that was led in 1981. Uh, it means more than 40 years ago. And it was led by the French National Institutes of Demographic Studies, INET, and of Statistics and Economic Studies, conjointly uh, or jointly. And there were at that time um, about uh, 5,000 people who answered the survey from any region of France and aged from 45 to 69. And they were asked questions concerning three dimensions of their life family, professional, and residential. And then all this was led uh, by people who were leading interviews. And then it comes as a result in, in the shape of papers. But uh, gently, INED has digitalized all this survey. And then it's now available in the shape of an age-even card. And this age-even card is a spreadsheet which contains about um, more than 500 um, uh, uh, thousand rows, and uh, which is a, a, a quite big, big uh, CSV file. So it looks like that, and then it means that now we are able to uh, pick up data 
from that, um, for instance, describe a life trajectory uh, in the shape of a CSV file. So if you look at the, the, the column here, we have one individual and we learn that he has some, we have some information about, about his or her spouse and the individual here is called ego. And then you may look at this column and we have some information. And if you look how it works, from the moment he was born in 1912, then each year is uh, correspond to one row. And for each year, we ask the, the, the individual, where do you live at that moment? So he has given an answer. And then if we uh, continue with the same individual, we ask him, when do, do you start to work? And he started to work in 1925 at the age of 13. And then for each year, uh, we ask him, where do you work, in which place, in which uh, factory, etc. And uh, at the end, we have also some information about uh, not only the individual, but if I look here, uh, for instance, I have some information about his parents, the relative, his, his children. Okay, so for instance, we have uh, here uh, four, three children for this um, Sorry, four here, four children for this individual, etc. And then we have the next individual, which number is 5001, etc. So we have here 5000 different individuals and a lot of data which describe their lives in three dimensions. And uh, currently we have this model and we are uh, transferring data from the CSV file to uh, this model and this model is now familiar to you because you see at the central concept this person we have a prof uh, professional uh, trajectory we have a family trajectory we have a re residential trajectory and because we have some information in the data regarding the relatives then we have been obliged to extend our model and to add some um, concept or some information concerning his children his father, his mother, etc. And we could have been able to make those information uh, uh, life, elements of life trajectory. But the thing is that in this file, not much is said about the father, not much is said about the mother. We only know where they live and where they died. So that's not enough to make those individuals relative to the person we are dealing with. Um, um, to, to uh, assign them life trajectory because we don't know that much about their life trajectory, okay? We are focusing on the respondent and for the respondent, we have a lot of information, okay? So I come to the end of my talk. So uh, I, I was gently invited to, to present this model because we are now uh, working with Professor Valdeni and Professor Leandro and uh, we are um, working with uh, the help of a PhD student uh, whose name is Oscar, and um, uh, we are asking together uh, themselves, uh, ourselves, sorry, we are asking ourselves some, some question. And the, the main question is, can this multidimensional life trajectory model be used to model and analyze, it means query and visualize, learning trajectories. What is the link between the life trajectories model I have presented and a model of learning trajectories you certainly have in mind? And we think that, or I think that, there are several paths to explore. Uh, first, uh, talking about the, the life trajectory model is a multidimensional approach. And perhaps it's good to see a learning trajectory model as multidimensional um, model because uh, the, uh, the the question we have is can a learning trajectory be represented as a succession of events and episodes then it would look very like uh, a, a life trajectory um, uh, a life trajectory but also is a learning trajectory by nature multi thematic temporal geographic or spatial multi granular the the answer could be yes and are some events and episodes which are linked to the learning trajectory explainable by uh, some known or to be discovered factors, then it would be perhaps relevant to 
introduce explanatory factors in the learning trajectories as well. So, and then reversely, uh, there would be the question of inserting the learning trajectory as one of the dimension of the life trajectory. I, I, is it relevant? And the idea would be, can we detect some similarities between learners uh, um, or detect perhaps some explanatory factors that are external? They are not part of the education world in which the learner evolves, but they are part of, for instance, his um, family world, his, um, I don't know, the, the place where he lives, etc. cetera. And um, uh, the last question would be, or one of the last question, can such factors be used to repair, adjust, improve some learning trajectories? The thing is that if we know uh, that we have some uh, very, uh, very acceptable learning trajectories, successful learning trajectories, then is it able to compensate, to repair, to adjust some, um, uh, I would say, um, um, uh, oh, I, I, I'm missing the word, but uh, uh, um, learning trajectories that are not as expected. And then uh, taking the model of good learning trajectories, how to, uh, make the thing change and then put the the individual on on the on a good learning trajectory that was my uh my purpose so i come to the conclusion just to say that here uh, i have presented a methodology for the study and the analysis of life trajectories so it is equipped with some tools and with some apis as i've shown and the perspective of the future works uh deals with uh, as i said uh, the processing of two real data sets that we have. And uh, a we'd like also to design and implement an interface for visualizing uh, live trajectories. We, we would like also users, um, experts, for instance, sociologists or any, any, any other kind of experts um, uh, to be able to query without uh, having any knowledge of Sparkle, which is a, a difficult uh, query language. And um, then a, a PhD is going to start. And uh, the idea would be to tackle this model with machine learning techniques and try to, uh, of course, develop a set of similarity measures, but also the idea of uh, being able of clustering, classifying uh, several uh, similar trajectories in the same group, or even to complete uh, some trajectories uh, knowing uh, from other trajectories which are similar, we can perhaps um, predict what is going to happen. And then, uh, of course, we would like to integrate some other dimension, but it depends on the data we have. But we can think of a life trajectory that put the focus on the health on the, uh, of the individual. That would be very interesting to link the health dimensions with other di dimensions. And then, as I said, uh, to conclude, uh, it would be very interesting to make the link between this life trajectory and the learning trajectories, of course, to give some inspiration, but also to get some inspiration from uh, from learning trajectories. Thank you very much, obrigado, and uh, merci. Thank you, Professor Jerome. Uh, let's listen to Professor Leandro. Leandro, you are a presenter now. If you Good afternoon. Have... Let me let me share my screen. Okay. I'd like to thank you, thank you, Raquel and Professor Valdeni for inviting me to discuss this topic. And it's a pleasure to be here with Professor Jerome, uh, a colleague that works with this interesting topic. It was a nice uh, presentation. And uh, as I already said, I'm associate professor at uh, Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. And uh, currently I'm uh, as the secretary of distance learning uh, education at works. And uh, I work with machine learning and recommender systems applied to learning trajectories. Uh, but my talk will be a little be different, will be more philosophical, so we can then discuss 
those topics already presented by Jerome uh, in a more technical way. I also adapted a little bit the theme and uh, I'd like to, to discuss with you how to help professionals analyze and understand and make use of life trajectories. That is how to explore data from those life trajectories. And uh, it's important to stay that I'm focused on learning trajectories, not uh, specifically in this more general topic of life trajectories, but uh, we are interested on learning, uh, life learning trajectories, how people learn during the, their lives, uh, both in a formal or informal way. And uh, of course, uh, here, uh, for the sake of time, we are interested in own specific courses or specific disciplines. And in this case, uh, we have uh, less information to deal with than in life trajectories. And as we have seen, we have different, uh, different dimensions. Uh, and even uh, focusing on, on learning trajectories, we will see that we have many, many, many data and, and, and even uh, variables to, to tackle. Uh, in addition, in physical classes, we can know if students are paying attention, enjoying or not uh, the class, evolving, and so on. But uh, students have different paces, objectives, and interests. And when you go online, things get more complicated. And uh, when we are de dealing with this, uh, teaching, learning, and trajectories, I, I understand that teachers must somehow know what students know in terms of concepts or contents, uh, their competences, their abilities, uh, their skill level, uh, what they can or cannot do, how do they learn, what are their uh, objectives, objectives, personal objectives, or even learning objectives. And all of that will help. So uh, how can we collect and analyze this information, uh, this information, this all set of information uh, makes uh, are part of a, a learning trajectory, of a, learning, a life learning trajectory. And uh, as you have seen, my colleague Jerome has shown some ways to, to do that, not focused on learning trajectories, but we can uh, imagine how to do that on this context. So I will discuss a little bit more in a more abstract level uh, those, those issues. The first... Uh, thing I'd like to, to, to mention and to, to discuss with you is the role of uh, learning analytics. We can say, we could say analytics by itself, but as I said, I'm more focused on learning, so learning analytics. And uh, if we consider just one student, it's already too much information. If you have a lot of students, as we have in a traditional class, or uh, worse, if uh, we can have many more students if, if we are considering online learning, then uh, analytics is uh, a way, uh, a tool uh, that we can use to analyze this large amount of information about what uh, users do in the environment, what they, what they face, uh, even or considering both formal and informal environments. And uh, it's used when we have uh, lots a lot information and uh, indeed analytics is relevant for any context uh, of dimension of, line, of life trajectories, but uh, we need to contextualize it for learners and for teachers. We can use it to help users, uh, learners, students achieve their objectives. Uh, we can use it to guide them through this overwhelming number of resources that uh, are available on the web 
or in classes. And we also can use it to help teachers uh, perform their daily activities. So the first thing is uh, how can we use learning analytics for teachers? Uh, I imagine that we can or we could use it to help teachers uh, better understand their students, identify successful or unsuccessful paths or patterns, and uh, identify good or bad uh, outliers. Uh, to understand the students means uh, how to know not only their profiles, but also their needs, uh, their difficulties, their aims, and so on. To find the uh, successful paths, uh, it's related to find the trajectories that lead to success, uh, academic success in this case. But uh, the unsuccessful ones are are also are also interesting because if we find someone following those unsuccessful paths, we can then warn this person, this person, this student. We can recommend or advise. Uh, them to, to change. Uh, the patterns are related not only to behavior, but also to profile, uh, to knowledge and other indicators uh, that we, we want or we must track. Uh, as shown by Shehom, we can use ontologies to help us model the context. Uh, and in terms of outliers, we, we, we want or we need to identify the good and also the bad ones, because uh, this, these bad ones are the, are the ones that do not follow a pattern uh, or that are different in terms of expectations, in terms of profiles and so on. And what makes make it difficult is the fact that uh, students will produce a lot of information, as, as I already said, and we have seen uh, during the presentation of Shehom, uh, especially during their, their lifetime, their life trajectory. And uh, due to the technology available, uh, the way we, I imagine the way we, we will, we will learn in the near future, uh, near future will be different, at, le at least in terms of mass education. I think that uh, for most people, uh, online learning will be the, the future. Uh, we, don't, we don't have uh, money and resources to, to perform a more focused ed education, live education for everybody. So, uh, we could have lots of students at the same time, and then the teacher, the professor, people who are uh, understanding what is happening to them, uh, will have to use those kind of uh, models and technologies to, to guide, to help them uh, to aid students achieve their uh, objectives. So in, the, in terms of students, uh, I also imagine that uh, learning analytics could be helpful because it can be or it could be used to understand uh, where students are. They can have a panoramic view of uh, the context and then uh, compare them to other colleagues and uh, analyze where they are and where they must be, how can, can they achieve this objective, and uh, they could use it to adjust the paths and also to find relevant resources. So, uh, where, using, where, where students are, it's somehow abstract, and uh, I imagine we can relate it to knowledge, the knowledge they have to achieve, they, they must have to, the knowledge, the knowledge they must have to start following a specific key trajectory. Uh, we could also imagine competences, abilities, or any other element we need or want to consider. And uh, we could use all this uh, information related to analytics in conjunction, conjunction with other approaches. 
or technologies like recommender systems. Uh, that's uh, what I do. And uh, this combination could help students uh, automatically or semi-automatically adjust their paths uh, or even find, find uh, appropriate resources. The resources and paths uh, can be analyzed. We can analyze the, the students or persons who have, let's say, successful uh, trajectories and then recommend some of these paths to the others who are in need of some adjustment or something like that. And uh, will it be easy and sufficient? Uh, of course, I imagine, of course, no, because uh, to learn is not uh, an easy test. And uh, it depends on the subject, but also on many different elements. For instance, uh, people are different. And usually, usually it's okay to be different. Uh, people should be different because uh, it's what makes us so interesting. Uh, the difference allows us to see the road differently and have dif different ideas, uh, propose different approaches uh, to solve problems. But the issue is that uh, when differences are due to a social economical aspects, when people do not have access to the same opportunities, and uh, and that's the challenge in my opinion. Uh, I mean, how can how can use can we use learning analytics or even technology to to make people with different life trajectories achieve the same uh, results to achieve an, an objective uh, to have uh, access to similar or equivalent resources uh, we know that due to this those social aspects maybe recommending the same uh, paths, the same resources to all people will not be sufficient. They, they just, just uh, because they, they, they can't access the same elements, but uh, that's the, as I said, the challenge how to propose a similar uh, resource or, or, or path, an adjustment to, that is compatible with this, these uh, restrictions so we could uh, have different people with different trajectories uh, achieve, as I said, the same objective. So uh, to give example, the current uh, context we are dealing with pandemic uh, is something interesting to, to consider. Uh, most Brazilian universities, especially the federal ones, adopted what we call the emergency remote learning, and we could ask, was it good? Uh, I would say we don't know yet, but we know that uh, at least for some people it wasn't, it isn't. I'm aware in my position that some people had serious problems, and most, most of them, most of the cases seems uh, related to social economical aspects, as I said. For instance, uh, people that do not have access to good equipment or do not have good internet access. And uh, even those that have good equipment or internet access sometimes must uh, share, share them with uh, other members of the family. And because of that, they cannot use uh, as needed those equipments, those, uh, those connections to perform their activities, their learning activities. And uh, also we have seen people that have this all, but uh, could not dedicate uh, the needed time to learn due, due to work, some work they have or work they have uh, Obtain it doing do it to, to, to the pandemic uh, uh, extra work, for example, or simply because they have to take care of kids, take care of, of a familiar, and so on. So all this must be considered in, in a model 
that we are going to to create uh, to to provide those recommendations or to make some adjustment or to I mean to provide some some kind of analysis uh, to help uh, users in this case learners learn and uh, I could also say that uh, some topics or activities are not appropriate to be performed online of course those those projectors do not need to be online they, they, they could be as I said uh, presential but maybe it will not be the case for everybody and uh, in this in this case they are difficult to be virtualized especially the ones related to laboratories or uh, in the case of medicine health related practice and similar uh, ones so uh, how could adapt how could we adapt learning trajectories uh, of course the successful ones to cover those cases that's the the main question and uh, i have other interesting dimensions that i think are relevant uh, that may um, turn the the model more complex for instance how do users feel uh, i can be i can feel something now and some minutes after feel differently uh, is there something affecting my my life in this moment uh, emotionally economically personally and then all those models usually uh, are static or uh, in, uh, identify someone as being of a specific profile but as i said we are dynamic beings uh, and we change we change, we change emotions uh, a lot due to different uh, elements so I, I also imagine that we can we should consider this dimension as well and it's not so easy to, to do so and uh, also each person is different and teaching and learning should also be each person has uh, uh, their own specific trajectory so we are trying to model and find the similar elements to find patterns but uh, do they exist uh, are they really needed somehow yes but as i said we must adapt to, to each case and uh, to complicate a little more in addition we have different applications we have different platforms tools social networks and uh, people get in touch with other people during their lives if you are dealing with life learning or just life trajectories uh, you must know that people during those interactions may get more information may may change their minds uh, because interactions change people so uh, we should somehow consider uh, this fact and we are modeling their trajectories so this all affects the way we we learn so this all affects the way the what we learn also and uh, we must think about that i don't have a solution I'm just bring you some questions issues and aspects uh, sometimes i imagine it's it's interesting to to present some solutions but also as we have here many different uh, students doing the phds i think it's good also to to bring up some uh, questions that can be approached by them in their thesis uh, to finish to to have so we can have a little time to to discuss uh, the idea was as i said to tease to provoke to instigate you all and uh, i can say to finish that we have many elements to consider as i, I have shown 
Uh, I just talked a little bit of many different things that are, that are complex by themselves. Uh, it's, it's important to, 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 to say, to recover that, uh, to abstract that people are, as I said, dynamic. They, they change objectives over time and uh, users' profiles are not totally static. I have seen a question uh, about this in, in the, the system for us to discuss after. And uh, not only, that's not only the problem, the profiles are, profiles are dynamic and uh, also they are not binary. We cannot say people have or are like X or Z, they can be uh, in a state in the, in the, that is in the middle or 30% in one state and 70% in another. So it's a, a kind of fuzzy, fuzzy modeling. And most models we use are not fuzzy, they are binary. So uh, maybe should, should also consider that when representing in modeling trajectories. Uh, so uh, depending on the mood or other external aspects, people may change their minds and even the, even the, the engagement. And uh, if someone is, is, is in a good trajectory or, or is uh, being successful in a moment, in another mo moment, they, they cannot be. So it's a constant evaluation, a constant uh, analysis and uh, the role of the teacher and even colleagues is important because they, they should be there to help and uh, try to identify those, those issues uh, and aid each other. Uh, to, to finish, uh, I would say that the models and algorithms are not yet able to deal, to deal with all these elements. At least yet, they are not stable. And uh, we have seen some, uh, some models used by Amazon, by Google, that are trying to cover some of these aspects and with some, uh, some uh, small success. And it may be a question of time to, to add more and more elements. And uh, I have some students working with uh, those aspects with learning analytics. Um, Oscar was already mentioned, but we have more people in the group. Uh, it's not just uh, me, we have colleagues as Raquel here, Valdeni, Palaz, and others are working with uh, a different aspect of learning trajectories. And in my case, my students are dealing with uh, visualization, visualization and uh, the, the identification, identification of patterns and uh, trying to identify the most effective trajectories. Uh, and also trying to correlate trajectories with, as I said, successful learning. Uh, of course, you must discuss maybe what is successful learning or not, but in our case, we have adopted a specific approach that's based based on item item uh, RT item. I forgot the term, uh, but it's analyze items and correlate those items to concepts, and then we are able to identify in a more maybe summative evaluation to know which concepts students know and uh, how much they must uh, know or learn to achieve the minimum set of objectives that we, we need, we have established. And uh, the idea is to correlate this with their trajectories. And then uh, you have somehow the most successful ones and the ones that not have achieved what we have established. And the idea is to recommend 
uh, chains in the pets of the ones that have different profiles and unsuccessful ones uh, to help them uh, to be in the the recommended let's say approach uh, but as I but as I said, it's not so easy because of all the the issues uh, we have uh, uh, talked about, and some it's an open and that's good because of that it's an open issue issue, and we have many many research and ideas to test in the near future. So that's the the end of my small talk. I will give you some some time to absorb that and to discuss with us those elements. Thank you, Raquel. It's up to Thank you, you now. Thank you very much, Leandro. It was very interesting to listen to you as well as to listen to Professor Jerome. Uh, I, I asked Professor Jerome to, to turn on his camera and microphone so that we can um, start the, the question session. I will, um, I will share my screen so that we can see the, the questions on Slido. Can you see it? So, Can you see it already? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So we had 14 questions that were made during both of your speeches, your lectures. So uh, we are going to start by asking them and then you, you try to answer. Maybe you, both of you uh, can try to answer to, to make the, the discussion more interesting. So the first question was asked by Hodges, one of our PhD students, and he asks, how do we relate life trajectories and learning trajectories? I believe Professor Jerome could begin trying to, to answer and then Professor Leandro. And I think this was precisely the, the questions I was uh, myself asking. Um, and, uh, I propose two, two tracks, and um, um, but but when I was listening to to Leandro, uh, it seems to me that um, well, as he said, we th there's a kind of uh, contextual um, information that can explain a change um, in, in the learning trajectory. And I think that such data can be provided by life trajectory, which embedded di different dimensions. And he was talking about financial aspect or personal life aspect, etc. And uh, also I was thinking that at the beginning, I was asking my colleague, uh, Leandro and Valdini, uh, what is the learning space? And then um, a learning trajectory to me would be uh, thinking of an abstract space and there is a starting point and an ending point, and there is a knowledge itinerary. And the idea is that the the students is has to reach the the, the finish point. And, uh, and you, we we also thought at that time about the elevation, uh, the the topography of this learning space, because some concepts are more difficult to to acquire, etc. And uh, we we didn't discuss again again about this um, about this representation of a learning trajectory, but I think that it would be very interesting. And then, if we choose this kind of abstraction, then uh, of course we have a learning space and an it a knowledge itinerary, and uh, then there are some information that can explain. Uh, why uh, the process is speed up or is slow is slow down, and then uh, but then it would be data coming from a life trajectories uh, a model. But um, uh, because if we think as uh, education as a dimension in the life trajectory, then you with you we talk about diplomas etc. and schools, but learning trajectories to me is, as I realize now, and I realized it before, is something else, 
happen. And then perhaps there's some ideas to pick up in the um, <clears throat> the life trajectories model. But the thing is that it, it, it's a kind of model that comes to supply and provide information for uh, um, knowing more and explain more learning trajectories. Yes, I, I agree with you, Shiro. Uh, of course, you must, uh, and that's what we are trying to do with Oscar, to identify the elements that are important to model, to represent during learning. But uh, specifically to this question, how to relate life trajectories in learning. Learning is a, is a dimension of life. The learning trajectory is contained inside the life trajectory. So that's the relationship. What we are maybe discussing, how, how can we uh, model which aspects are relevant represent. Uh, we have some models, but uh, we don't know yet if they are sufficient. And, uh, and the point uh, identify which is important and uh, which is important for the student and for the teacher to help them uh, correct and uh, the, the trajectory and to to use this to help them in their lives that's it okay yeah i i was listening to you and I was uh, thinking about uh, the research of uh, Piaget and Maturana and Varela, and they, they talk about learning as a biological feature that we living organisms have um, to adapt, to survive, right? And uh, so yes, learning would be um, part of life. It's necessary for for the continuity of life. But when we humans uh, invented uh, institutions for uh, education and institutions for educational purposes, we, we, we made learning into some um, cultural uh, instance. We, we, we changed um, the way learning happens, right? Because um, we, we uh, established uh, our way to 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 transmit knowledge, to transmit culture from one generation to another in this um, uh, kind of artificial, in the sense that it's cultural way, right? So it's um, we can think that we have learning that happens all the time while we are living, and there is the formal, and there are many levels maybe of uh, talking about how formal learning takes place right but yeah it's a big issue so uh, this question would be how are the explanatory factors ranked who attributes the weight uh in the the part of the model that talks about uh, explanatory factors i i suppose yeah <clears throat> as i um as i said um the um, during the survey uh, the, the respondent can be asked, could you explain what you decide to move or change job, etc. And then the respondent gives explicitly some explanatory factors and he can rank them because the, the, the people who make the interview ask him or her, uh, could you rank those, uh, the reason why you, uh, this change happened? But I think that we all have also to consider uh, some survey and it is the case when we look at the 3b the real data sets we are now tackling there is there is no explanatory factors in it but the idea is for experts to um, discover some uh, pattern of uh, explanatory factors and then to explain that at some mo moments some uh, two two trajectories of two different individuals are similar because they have same, they have done the same choice and they have done the same choice just because uh, of similar situations they have experienced. And then you can uh, infer or deduce that you have here some explanatory factors, possible explanatory factors. Uh, 
Okay, so again, the sociologists or the experts could rank those explanatory factors because there are some are more plausible than others. But in the case where you ask explicitly the respondent to rank those and to to give and to rank those explanatory factors, then uh, of course it's, it is subjective. At the moment, the, the the respondent can give some explanatory factors, and then afterwards. Uh, you may know that this is done if this is not the reason maybe he wants to please the person who made the interview that's why he give one explanatory factors with, which is not the real reason okay so all of this is to, has to be taken into account so we provide uh, the, the the model for uh, uh, and this model of explanatory factors has to be filled and of course we there's the possibility of ranking of weighting those explanatory factors but uh, it depends on, on the survey, I would say, and on the study, uh, on the ongoing study or the study which used the, the model. Okay, so the next question was uh, asked by Igor, another of our PhD students, and he asks how to select and use different type of data to construct trajectories. As I said, uh, in the first case, the use case we have is that the, the sociologist uh, with whom we were working has built the, the, the survey with uh, students from a Master of Sociology. And then he asked those students, can you go and interview some persons? And then we are going to process the data. And then we comes to the, 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 the tool I've shown. And, uh, but it was very specific, this use case. It was the residential trajectories of people uh, in particular, people coming from Italy uh, 20 or 40 years ago in, in Grenoble. And then, um, uh, yes, um, so uh, the data, for instance, when I was talking about the real data set that now we have, uh, we come afterwards the, the survey, so it's difficult. So we have to, we, we were surprised that, for instance, um, uh, the people are asked, where do they work? but they, they only precise the place where they work. They, they, they don't give any information because they were not asked, where did you work, in which factory, etc., which would have been very useful. So I, I would say that we have different kind of data. The thing is that it's more easy if we have digital data, but you can think of the survey we have online and then the, the people are able to complete this, this survey about their life trajectory anytime they like, and then of course, we can uh, gather uh, information of any kind, uh, I would say, <laughs> but the, the idea is that the, the person, the expert who is going to build his own life trajectory model is the only one to, to know what kind of data is important. And that the same process for a sociologist when you think of, well, I, I have to make a survey, what are the right questions and the data I would like to require you do is during this survey? Yes, thank you, Professor Sharon. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about that while you were speaking, uh, because probably, uh, for example, one thing that might happen is um, when um, two different people show the same patterns, show the same um, uh, factors, yeah, but um, the, the dimensions, I mean, but the factors they use to explain are very different, for example. Yeah, that can happen. So, um, uh, one thing that might happen is um, the system uh, equalizing things that for the people themselves are very different, for example, right? So, uh, it's important that that aspect that you are bringing now that uh, only the person can uh, uh, explain or, or decide yeah what is important so uh, the next question would be can any correlation indicate learning is it possible to relate an event that uh, is uh, indicates change yeah events indicate change uh, while episodes indicate duration is that right can uh, is it possible to relate an event to learning I think Leandro can answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think it depends. Uh, yes, but it depends on the the 
learning model or theory you are uh, basing your 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 model your your conclusion because uh, for for instance the most simple the 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 some summative learning for instance we can we can apply a kind of uh, event that is a, a questionnaire and then after performing the questionnaire and have some kind of uh, of grade we can say that he has after even learned something but uh, that's too easy we can we, we should uh, consider other other kinds of learning the the formative one is a little bit more difficult but uh, i think we can uh, relate uh, relate uh, tasks or or the fact that the, the learn the user is uh, achieving a goal or doing, doing something that he used not he couldn't do before and then the, 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 we can then correlate an event before this fact and then and, and this may be used to to to, to show or to, to to say that he has learned for instance but, uh, of course it's very complex but i think so we can we can we could find the events and correlate them to, to this change we just need to define which what will be the change which dimensions or elements we will consider in our model as learning all right so uh, the next question is are the dimensions static can they be added or suppressed the dimensions yeah, as presented, I briefly in, the presented in, in the in the interface uh, we put the tool in the, the hands of an expert and he has to design his own model of life trajectory. So he can choose any dimension and define what are the characteristics, the, the attributes that make this uh, dimension. So uh, it's not really static. I mean, in the process, uh, then afterwards you have, you look for data to, f to, to, to fill you to feed your model. And the thing is that you come to realize that one dimension has not enough value, then you can give up with these dimensions. But um, so the thing is, it's more than the, the, the dimension are not static because the model, they are, we give a tool to build a, a, a specific, very different uh, models of life trajectory trajectories it depends as i said for some expert the 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 residential the family and the professional dimensions would be very important for some others the health dimension would be important for instance if we are paying if we are paying intentions of the health of individual then you may think that uh, the, the family the residential and the professional is important but also uh, they have some correlations to make with the health trajectory, with the professional trajectory, for instance, or the family trajectory. So in that case, you have a new dimensions that clearly did not interest the sociologist with whom we have worked so far. But maybe it would interest some uh, sociologists we are who are more oriented towards health, or uh, maybe it would interest um, Practitioners, physicians, or doctors. Okay. Uh, uh, I could uh, ask you something in relation to this. Uh, in this case, if we decide to remove a dimension, or if we decide to add a new dimension, those data, this data that is related to that, will be removed. For instance, if I remove a dimension, or uh, if I add, I decide to add a, a new dimension, of course, we have already collected data from past interactions. We are, we are talking about life learning trajectory. So this new dimension won't be, uh, let's say, automatically adds. We, we don't have the, the, the information before. So how could to deal with this, this kind of discrepancy? We have information, we don't have information for new dimensions and maybe we need to acquire them and uh, how, how how can we deal with that adding dimensions and collecting data or, or having data for some people and not having for others other ones i think that's 
this is one of the advantage of uh, of choosing uh, a, a, a format uh, just like the RDF graphs that you have chosen, which makes it possible to complete our, our data uh, that we have, uh, for instance, for from a survey, uh, and then we, that we have integrated in the model to connect them, to link them with other data that could explain, for instance, as I said, some external factors, because you you. you when you talk about insecurity, then you may refer to some events that take place, that took place in in the in the suburb when the the individual life, and then you you understand that yes, it was right to think about insecurity, or then it, it may happen that you discover that nothing happens, but only he had in, in his mind that the the sur the place where we live had become insecure. So in that case, what we do is try to relate, to link uh, the data we have from the survey, from what the individual said, to other facts that are available in the web, to check if the explanatory factors they, they gave were right or no, that, that, or, or just because it was kind of subjective feeling they have but not real, uh, uh, not filled with uh, so much objectivity. Thank okay, you. so uh, the next question is, are there some dimensions more closely related to others and how can these distances be approached? The well, relations between um, dimensions, among dimensions? Surely, uh, 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 that's a very interesting question because, because that's the things we would like to discover. But if perhaps by simply visualizing some trajectory, life trajectories of one, two, three persons having some very similar profiles, we would discover that they have, they make, they make the same decision at the same times, considering that uh, some events happens at the same moment in their life and things. So. Uh, yes, there would be, uh, we can think that the moves, the frequency of the events in one trajectory are linked to the frequency of other events in another dimension. So in that case, we would say that those di dimensions are very close to each other. Okay. But that's the things we would like to discover precisely, mm -hmm. I would say. And then, uh, yes, if we have to, um, um, to compare uh, a, a, a multidimensional objects as a life trajectory is, then it means that we are going to use many kinds of distances. Distances regarding time, regarding space. And remember that I was talking about granularity and granularity, time is granular in essence and space also. So it makes the, the conjunction of all these similarity uh, measures, it, I mean distance, very complicated. So. We have to find a way to uh, find a balance between the complexity of the life trajectory in terms of dimensions and the similar similarity measures we would like to apply to say that, yes, those trajectory, life trajectories are similar simply because they are similar in one or two dimensions or maybe globally, but globally is, is, is much more difficult, I would say. Or we are only looking at uh, those trajectory on the very short period of time, and we can say that yes, those trajectory are similar on uh, very short periods of times, but on the whole life of the individuals, they are quite different. But at some moments, for this person between the age of twenty and thirty, is very similar with the this other person between the age of forty and fifty, for instance. So. There, there's a space to explore, and we are only at the beginning, I would say. Yes, very interesting. And uh, the next question would be, how does the model provide new correlations or new explanatory factors? Can the model do that? I think it is, it is linked to the question I answered, two questions before. The, 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 the correlation is, is what... Um, is provided perhaps through the survey because we uh, the, the, the the respondent is explicitly asked for uh, uh, giving explanatory factors and then the analytics uh, tools will be able to make the correlations between uh, some events 
and using uh, some uh, statistical methods uh, that reveal that a variable, I mean here, a kind of event is linked to uh, uh, other kinds of events in other dimensions. Okay, so mm -hmm. yes, we have the statistics methods and tools to do that, but we are not yet put them into, into practice, I would say. But it would be interesting to do that. And I, I'm thinking about some modules that provide the R uh, statistic language that makes it very, uh, I would say, very simple to, 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 to try to find some correlations, such kind of correlations. Okay, the next question would be uh, in, the, in the system, in the model, can events and episodes occur at the same time? Can they be uh, registered no. simultaneously? It, it depends what you call at the same time because you are observing, the, the, there's a, a timeline which is the, the, the life of the individual from his birth to, to now, I would say, or to his death. It depends which kind of people you are, living people or dead people you are considering. And uh, then, of course, uh, 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 an episode is by definition uh, um, starts with an event and ends with an event, okay? Uh, but um, so uh, perhaps I understand the question as a, either it's a granularity of time, but uh, or if you look at one precise moment, then you have an, uh, an episode in one dimension that corresponds to a, a, an event in the other dimensions. But uh, the definition is quite explicit. I mean, uh, the, the, the episodes is surrounded by events, but th so they should not occur at the same time. I, or it means that you have two very close in time events and no episode, uh, and, and then the episode is not relevant at that moment because the, 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 the change are, uh, the, the change is quite immediate. Uh, uh, so, uh, there's no way of talking about an episode in that case, to me. Okay, yeah, it, it, it is related to the way the system was modeled, right? So, uh, the next question was uh, written by me. So, uh, every biography is a narrative. How can the research benefit from narrative models or theories? I don't know if you have considered this possibility, but life trajectory is a biography and a biography is a narrative, right? So yeah. my, my PhD thesis uh, is related to metaphors. I used okay. the, the conceptual metaphor theory to, to, to uh, approach the idea of learning and uh, the idea of a metaphor as a, a cognitive um, aspect of our uh, way of learning, right? So. Um, can you benefit maybe this research from narrative models or theory? Yeah. Um, well, uh, perhaps to to um, once we have a trajectory in one dimension of, of several dimensions, uh, we could explain uh, uh, the 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 form or the shape of the trajectory using a metaphor, for, for instance. And, uh, but also, I think that when it comes to the narrative aspect, in fact, there's a, um, it, it's very difficult because um, we are not asking, we are not really asking the, the user to uh, 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 tell about his or her life. Uh, because when it is done through a classical survey, you have the, 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 the people who lead the survey, they interpret the, 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 what the respondents say, and then they put this down on the form, and it means that they are going to, okay, uh, they're going to put the answer of the, of, of the respondent into some words, and uh, then they narrow the narrative, okay? So they change the nature of the narrative. And, of course, what we could do is through an online survey interface, ask people to tell about their life and then to use from some natural language processing in in order to 
so that the ma machine can understand the narrative and what is important in the narrative. But for instance, um, uh, it, it, I, I don't know, uh, it could be inter interesting, but um, uh, yes, using metaphor, but at the same time, um, uh, th those, th the tools are presented uh, is, is made for uh, analysis. So uh, it, it's a pity that uh, I, I'm not sure that all the, uh, the, the testimony of the individual is, uh, is kept uh, in, the, in the model that we have. And uh, it would be nice perhaps to keep uh, uh, other kind of uh, uh, media. For instance, it would be nice that for each um, survey, we have a video or an audio um, file of the person. And then uh, there will be some complementary uh, information that at the moment where we extract uh, the, or we keep some digital information from the survey, we didn't think that such information was important, but going back to the, uh, the moment where the, mm, the, the, the individual give the testimony about his life, the, the, the tale about his life, then it would be interesting to have those sources of information and to get back to that to see if there is some complementary information we miss. Yes. Then we have a multimedia tool. Yeah, yeah. actually, and yeah, that, that, that would be very interesting, I think. Yeah, yeah. and you are uh, actually you were trying to to write uh, narratives uh, through the machine, yeah. right? Use the machines, use the computers. It's actually a new way of writing. Uh, biographies of writing uh, a narrative yeah yes but we are We're just we beginning are, yeah I, I would say that what we do is we try to uh, give an abstract of the the life of people uh, in several dimensions but uh, it, it's very short and and and, and then we, we shortenize <laughs> the the life of people and focusing on some aspect when you're talking about a, a, a dimension uh, and that sounds for the, the question, if you think that you have missed one attribute in one dimension, at any moment you can have, have or suppress one attribute. But the question is, as Leandro asked, then you, you need to, pro, to be sure that you have some data to fit this attribute. Mm -hmm. okay. So All right. And uh, our last question. I believe both of you may try to answer is, uh, will ICT replace teachers? What do you think? Technology will re replace the humans in education? Maybe I can answer <laughs> that. Uh, uh, I think this question could be uh, replaced by, do you think artificial intelligence teacher will replace real teacher, a human teacher. And this might be the case, but in that case, I think I, I, I wouldn't like to be here to see that. This, this question is very interesting. As, as Jerome said, it's the same as will computers or will AI substitute humans? It's a long-term debate in computer science. I remember that uh, there was different groups at MIT uh, 30 years ago debating that. One group uh, believed in that, that this will, would happen and, and the other did not. And uh, they have not yet an answer. Uh, of course, uh, AI and technology have, it has, have evolved a lot. Uh, I see ICT as the name indicates a technology. It's a mean, mean to help humans in the case <coughs> teachers perform, perform their work. Uh, in terms of EA, many tasks uh, sought before that could not be performed by uh, computers are now being well performed by computers. We see that a lot with Google uh, look, uh, uh, finding people when we take photos and, and other, other examples. 
uh, computers imitating human voice, computer uh, generating text as uh, people were generating. So many things are, have evolved. Uh, I cannot foresee if it will really happen or not, neither when, but as Jerome said, it may be possible uh, considering the advance of models and of computers. As he said, I prefer, prefer to believe that no, because uh, I imagine some, I believe some elements uh, humans do, uh, they do better and uh, not, not only because of that, uh, maybe as I said, a question of time, but humans must still be humans. We must live socially, we must interact and uh, what's the the point if we cannot do that if you do that with a machine some may may say that uh, if that happens we won't know if we are interacting with a machine or not but uh, someone will know and maybe we can feel that i remember a movie and there are lots of movies about this topic just search the the the, the cases the, the the stories of Isaac Asimov and, and others uh, other writers of science fiction it is a, a, a recurrent recurrent topic and uh, in this movie that was uh, entitled priest uh, the priest uh, was uh, asking another priest and that other priest was a digital priest and he was uh, talking about his problems and the digital priests have uh, have uh, uh, found that he was he has seen it and uh, understand what happened and gave uh, it was not a mechanical answer but uh, uh, expected answer and uh, we know that humans because of the perception of uh, you know the, the 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 tone or different the different uh, aspects related to sentiment uh, are able to understand that the the, the person don't want a, 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 an answer just want to listen to 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 be listened or to 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 have a, a, a kind of answer that will make something positive and that was not what he was looking for i don't know if the ai or technology will achieve this point but, but as i said and jerome said i don't want to to be here when this will happen if this will happen thank you I, just to complete i think that the the current pandemic shows that we are far from this stage and uh, even when we use uh, distance uh, remote learning tool uh, now uh, in my university we welcome back students and it, it, it means that I am currently teaching with a mask they we they all have a mask and but we are very happy to <laughs> to meet each other again and uh, after one year and a half of teaching uh, remotely teaching and using those uh, those tools that they, they are very useful but it well, I think we are far from uh, for 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 from having this intelligent and artificial teacher uh, yet. And and uh, what I observe is that uh, uh, for the moment, I think that uh, uh, students still uh, the new generation <laughs> still appreciate to have a, a real <laughs> human teacher in front of them, and that is even better even better than having this teacher. Uh, behind a screen far away as I, I am today from, from Brazil. I would like to be here, but unfortunately <laughs> that's not possible yet. Uh, I hope that everything will, will, would get uh, in, uh, in, in normality again soon. Thank you, Professor Jerome, Professor Leandro. That makes three of us. So I also expect for us to, to resume our regular activities soon. But um, I agree that we learned a lot uh, with this pandemic um, uh, time episode, <laughs> right? To use the term 
uh, from the, the model Professor Jerome presented. Uh, so I thank you very much, both of you, for your generosity you. and your time to, to be you. with us and to share your research, your knowledge. It was very, very interesting, very, um, very amusing to, to hear both of you. And I believe uh, all of us uh, learned uh, many, many new uh, information, many uh, developed many new knowledge uh, during your uh, lectures. So thank you very much. And now it's night here in Brazil as well. It was afternoon when we began. And so thank you especially to you, Professor Jerome, because we know it's very late there. It, it, so. it is very soon tomorrow here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So thank okay. you very much, and we hope You're welcome. this uh, research was a uh, partnership um, uh, is very successful and very productive to all of us. Thank you Good very night. much. Bye bye. Good night and um, Good night. Bye bye. Our event continues tomorrow, so we hope to see all of you tomorrow here at uh, Synthagi YouTube. Thank you. Pode parar a transmissão.